from uh, 1 Peter chapter 13, verse 18. For Christ also has once suffered sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened in the spirit. So what is this about? It's not about death. It's not necessarily about the word sin, because that's a trigger on a lot of people. What is he talking about? He's talking about the quickening of the spirit and the letting go of the attachment to this physical life. So I was raised in a very dogmatic church, like I told you guys earlier. What I found is that our ideas of what the Bible is, I shied away from this uh, text, of this spiritual text, for most of my life and studied every other spiritual text except for the Bible until about 12 years ago. And Spirit was saying, you're going to study this. <laughs> so, well, I didn't necessarily have to do it, but they wouldn't leave me alone. <laughs> so, and so, uh, so what did that change? The Bible is about alchemy, right? And it's called the living word, which means that as you study any type of spiritual text, Manly P. Hall says there are seven seals that have to be broken within you, and then it opens you up into the eternal book. What are those seven seals? We call them chakras, right? Okay, what do they, what do they happen? As you expand your mind and allow yourself to not be unlimited, have unlimited potential, you start to grow and this energy starts to grow in you because each chakra is lessons within your own life and they start to expand and grow and open up these apertures of energy start to open up because of your experience so if you start getting a lot of throat issues a lot of coughing or sore throats guess what where that's coming from that is coming from the fact that you're not living in your power the throat chakra is about power remember we speak our prayers uh, people that do uh, rituals, you know, the old pagans and the Wiccas, they, they speak their spells. We spell words. These things are very powerful. And so if you're not speaking your truth, and it's not just about coming up and saying, hey, I didn't agree with that. It's about speaking with integrity and living within what you're saying in your mind. Because what did Jesus say? He's, he taught us that whatever we're thinking in our mind is still basically happening. I don't know the exact verse off the top of my head, but it's saying, Basically, what he's saying to you is that what you're thinking inside is still creating on the outside. So you may not be speaking, and that can affect your throat as well. So you have an argument with your husband or your wife or your friend or whatever, and you start thinking, that jerk. That person doesn't even understand me at all. And you just start, and everything gets worked up, and then the solar plexus starts getting blocked up, and then starts getting up into the heart, and that starts clenching up. <laughs> then the start comes the next thing you know, you got a sore throat. The most powerful thing you can do right then when you start getting that angry and that upset is sit your butt down on your couch and start blessing them in your mind. You start saying, I bless this person, I love this person, let the truth be revealed, not just from them, but from you. The truth is about what, what is my part in this situation? That's a very powerful thing. And trust me, because I teach this and practice this every day I get tried. <laughs> so, <laughs> And it was so funny because I'm reading, uh, I'm reading, studying and really putting this study together for this week. And so what ended up happening, I bought a brand new car a few months ago and uh, somebody backed into it and didn't tell me about it, by the way. Oh, my gosh. So I, of course, what's my, your natural reaction? I started getting pissed. <laughs> so and it starts to come in and I'm like, I have to call Geico and I have to call, I have to go get it fixed and all this stuff. I spent this much money on that. I stopped and I sat down and I said, bless this person. <laughs> bless this person. <laughs> and that's how it works, right? But you keep working on it. You keep on working on it. You keep on sending them light. You keep on sending them love. Let's be real. The interesting part about that is the people that are teaching love and light, there's nothing wrong with that. They also have to go out there and say that things piss you off sometimes. However, when that happens, it's your opportunity to sit down. And sometimes you're not going to sit down because you're going to forget. Because the monkey mind or that, that little devil inside of us is going to be like, no, it's just too much. I have to be pissed right now. And, the, and sometimes it's a driving force. My business partner and I got to an argument last night. And uh, so I was naturally upset. So I started praying about it last night. And like I said, everything's been trying me right now. And uh, so this morning I got an apology in my email. So that's wonderful, right? Now, later on today, I, I'm going to call her up and we're going to have a talk about it. In which then I, Now that I'm calm... We can, I can speak my truth in a way that's not hurtful. Make sense? And so these are things that come with us. And so the quickening of the spirit comes with 
what? It comes with when we realize, when we get out of the monkey mind and get back into unison or into oneness with ourselves, then once that's happened, that quickening starts happening. Spirit starts flowing through you. Energy starts flowing through you. And it is so powerful. So let's go on. Uh, alchemy uh, comes out and says, Trans it's the transmutation, changing in action and in character from the, uh, the mortal or mental, physical, into the spiritual. It has been said that the mind is the cru is crucible in which the ideal is transmuted into the real. The real is what? The spiritual. That's out of uh, the Unity uh, Metaphysical Book or Metaphysical Dictionary that I accidentally ran across. Is that, has that ever happened to you guys before? Okay. You just run across these books there's a cute little church in St. Petersburg called the Temple of Love and Healing. Yeah. And they have a library of uh, stuff in there, but the books are like older books. They're like a dollar or two dollars. And the, all the money gets support, uh, supports the church. Well, I ran across the Unity, Charles Fillmore's Medical, Metaphysical Dictionary for a dollar. Wow. And I'm like, what a find. This is great. So these things come to us because they come to us at the right and perfect time. So going on, Luke uh, 23, uh, uh, Luke uh, chapter 23, verse uh, 34 says, Father, forgive them, for they know not, uh, not what they are doing, or they know not what they do, depending on which version you're reading. What is he saying? He's not saying, uh, he's not saying it didn't hurt him that the people that he cared about betrayed him. Did he, not, did he say that? No, he forgave them, because what, what did forgiveness do? It says, I let this go. And what is he, the cross, what is the cross all about? It's, it's what? Da Vinci's perfect man, isn't it? You guys know what I'm talking about? The man where he's standing like this and he draws a circle around him. And so that's what Jesus is, is in the formation of. He's in the formation of the perfect man. And so why? Because his heart chakra, his arms are open, they're spread, and he's expanded consciousness. I had a really powerful meditation probably about 10 or 11 years ago where I was in meditation. I just kept on pushing out the heart chakra, just pushing and pushing. And every time I breathe, I'd imagine it pushing. So my energy expanded so far that I felt like I had wings coming out of me. And then I thought, wow, that's really incredible. What is that all about? Well, then I saw this thing from William Henry, a picture where he compared the angels or uh, the ancient Egyptian gods and showed it right next to the Milky Way galaxy. What is the Milky Way galaxy? Bands of light that look like wings with a center uh, light in the middle of it. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Kind of sounds like you in your energy body. Because that's what you are, is energy. The one thing that's really powerful is that God never made a mistake. Spirit, whatever you wanna call it, and divine intellect. It doesn't matter what you believe in, there's this thing called the placebo effect. Everybody know what that is? Yeah. It's a study where they gave people sugar pills and said they were something else, that people didn't know about it, and they got better. So what the placebo is telling scientists is that there's something within you that fixes you because you're energy. And so what that means is that if whatever you believe in, whatever you pray, if you fully believe it with all your mind, body, and soul, then when you pray to it, it's going to start what? Changing things. Things will start happening. Miracles will start happening. So it doesn't matter if you call it God, divine intellect, divine intelligence, consciousness, quantum mind, whatever, you can call it whatever you want, but it has to come with that feeling, that true feeling of, I know this is going to happen. So how does faith happen? How does faith develop? It's actually developed right here. It's this little pine cone shaped thing in your brain called the pineal gland. So the more and more you practice faith, that opens up and it alchemizes. And the scientists have proved that it secretes melatonin. Melatonin is known to uh, reduce aging, to give you a shinier glow. This is a Newsweek magazine. You can look it up, Google it. Look, uh, melatonin in uh, pineal gland, Newsweek magazine. And it'll pull it up, it'll pull up the article for you, and it'll talk about in 1994, they were talking about how scientists are proving that melatonin does all these amazing things for your body. So what did people do? They started going up to the Dollar Tree and buying it for a dollar. <laughs> so that's not the same thing. Okay, well what it is, is the ancients called this thing called Christos. The Egyptians called it sap. And what they said is that something happened. They always show a female doing some kind of anointment on a male or a female, it's, it's masculine and feminine energy, not necessarily male and female, but they always picture showing a female doing some kind of anointment on a male figure. What does that mean? It means the divine feminine in you 
anoints the divine masculine in you and something secretes within you and it goes, runs down the River Jordan. What is the River Jordan? It is your spine. Okay, or the Kundalini. It is the awakening part of you. It is that electric eel, so to speak, that when it co comes up the pineal, uh, uh, excuse me, up the uh, uh, Kundalini and it hits up here in the pineal gland, it secretes, it opens, it releases melatonin, Christos, and then it illuminates your body and then you achieve what is called enlightenment, nirvana. So what can you have? You can have glimpses of enlightenment. I'm sure everybody's experienced that before. That's what the Christians or the Pentecostals call a quickening, what he is talking about here in the Bible. So that's your moment of transmutation. You've transmuted something within your body. So there's also 12 is the path of the soul. 12 is a very significant and spiritual text. Uh, Jesus, Jesus prophesied the 12 thrones with Jesus to judge the 12 tribes. That was in Matthew 19, 27 and 28. So the 12 tribes, if you break down Israel, is broken down into IS, uh, right, for Israel, which is Isis, the divine feminine, right? Um, Ra, or the divine masculine. And then L in the Israel is, stands for shining ones. There's a lot of L's in, the, in, the, in spiritual text. There is Michael, Gabriel. You know, most of the angels have L at the end of their name, with the exception of a few. Metatron. What does the tron or the on at, that, at the end of the name stand for? It means one who has transmuted themselves from humanity into spirit. So they got that name on or tron at the end of their name because that meant that they transmuted themselves from the physical into spirit. And so that was what? Enoch, right? Who transmuted himself into Metatron. Now some people also believe that Enoch is also Hermes Trismegistus. Some people believe that. It doesn't necessarily mean it's true. It's just some theories are out there of that. Okay? So and when you keep on in the, these theories, it doesn't necessarily mean they're true, but it's, it leads you down a path. And has anybody gone down that rabbit hole before? And they're just continuing going in symbolism or studying you're studying. Maybe it's on whatever subject you're passionate about. I'm, just, I'm very passionate about symbolism, if you can't tell. So, and so it just uh, makes you keep on going and looking. And, I, meant, I, I would like all of you to venture out on whatever topic it is you, you, earn, you enjoy. But, so I've been doing this study for 10, 11 years, 12 years, however long, and I was looking for something to correlate because I already knew about the 12 tribes of Israel. I knew about the 12 disciples. I knew about the 12 zodiac sign. I knew 12, 12, 12 was consistent. I wrote, wrote articles about it. I've done all this stuff, and I was looking for something that would help me bring it all together. Well. Then I had this book dropped into my lap by Charles Fillmore. And, and it came up and it says the 12 mind powers. So faith is equivalent, and he actually equates it to people, Peter, the apostle Peter. He also equates it, because what is he uh, attributing it to? The characteristics of these disciples or these apostles. Uh, strength goes into Andrew. Uh, love, John. Power, Philip. Imagination, Bartholomew. Will, divine will, is Matthew. Divine order is James. Divine zeal is Simon. Divine illumination is Thaddeus. And uh, divine life is Judas. Divine wisdom is James. And so I find this very powerful because we're going to do a really quick, we're going to do a real quick exercise here. Um, but they all go into divine faith, divine strength, divine love, divine power, and they're in different parts of your body. I don't have the graph here with me, but divine strength is right here in the middle of your back. So if you, what is the back all about? It's all about the past, whether it's, whether it's in this life or many other lifetimes. So if you suffer from a lot of back pains, guess what? That's affected you in your strength and your strength is your core. So when you were a kid, does anybody make fun of you, call you names, all that kind of stuff? Everybody should raise their hand because that happened to all of us, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, has anybody ever said anything mean to you? Oh, yeah. Has anybody ever stabbed you in the back? Oh, yeah. Has anybody ever gossiped about you? Oh, yeah. Everybody have to do with uh, work gossip and all the work politics and all that other kind of stuff? Yeah. Okay, so all that stuff happens and it, it hits you. Sorry. It's like, it's like an acid being thrown on you. So what happens is before you became aware of all this stuff, 
it hits you and then it pushes on that string and you start dropping down a little further. You start, start, don't stand up as tall, all that kind of stuff. So then zeal is about what? It's about our excitement about life, right? That comes right here in the back of the head, right where the gatekeeper, where the reptilian brain is. Okay, so that part of your body is where you stop getting excitement about life. You start getting bored. It means you're doing you're going down a path that's no longer serves you. So you have to. There's probably been signs saying, "Hey, do something different. Pay attention." So if you start doing something different and going down what's passionate for you, then you start illuminating and your zeal starts opening back up and starts going, "Hey, yeah, you're listening to me. <laughs> Are you with me on that?" All right. So then divine power. I already talked about this. It's right here. Okay. Divine love is obvious. Where do you guys think that's at? Heart, right? So it just kind of breaks it down. Uh, divine understanding is in the brain, and divine faith is in the brain. And there is the there is the uh, consciousness parts of us, and there is the unconscious, the lower part of the body. So the Egyptians are the ancients considered to be in the Bible. The Egypt is considered to be the dark lower part of the body, which is really the, what that's all about. Because they called Egypt what the dark kingdom. Doesn't, darkness doesn't mean bad. It just means unconscious. It means that's the area of yourself you're not aware of. So that's why we all have different things going on in our bodies. And by the way, when I talk about this stuff, because sometimes when we talk about the healing in the body, people start going, well, I've had that before. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. We're all experiencing different things, right? So I've had sickness too. And I've had pains in my body. I've been having one in my knee lately. And then I found out I've been sleeping like this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been affecting my ankle and my knee, and I'm like, why am I sleeping like that? The body starts going where the mind and the inner world is working. Does that make sense? So I had to start looking at that, and this is the healing work that you want to start doing. You want to start <clears throat> listening to what's going on. Are you in alignment with your spiritual side? So I'd like everybody to just kind of close their mind really, or close their mind. <laughs> Open your mind, close your eyes. I did that in church a couple weeks ago. Too, <laughs> Which it's just a real quick exercise. Well, we get to the meditation, absolutely. So I'm just going to say these mind powers, and I want you to feel them in your body. And we're going to do this a couple times because as I kind of build you into this calmness, it'll you'll start feeling it more. But I'm going to say the words, and I just want you to feel them: divine faith, divine strength, divine love, divine power. Divine imagination, divine understanding, divine will, divine order, divine zeal, divine elimination, divine life, and divine wisdom. You can open your eyes. Anybody you feel that in your body? It's okay if you didn't. I'm going to get you there. <laughs> so what I'd like for everybody to do is just while you're sitting here, I want everybody just to keep, you can get, do it with your eyes open or closed, whatever way you want to do it. I want you to imagine that golden cord hitting your crown, and I want you to feel it going down into your toes. And what you're going to say while that's happening is say, you're saying in your mind, I connect to source. I allow that to flow through me. And then I want you to feel the earth coming up through your feet and hitting your heart and going up to your head. And I want you to say, I'm grounded to the earth. And then I want you to feel this. You're gonna, they're both joined in the heart. And I want you to say, balance and feel yourself expand. Can you feel the difference? So this is the practice that I'd like to see you start doing is when somebody pisses you off, as I said earlier, immediately go in your mind, connect ground balance. What's that say? What does that say? What ends up happening when you're not, uh, when somebody pisses you off, your fright or flight mind starts to kick in. So it starts going into this panic. It starts going, oh, this person is such a jerk. Blah, blah, blah. All this stuff starts running into your mind. And what ends up happening is your body literally jump, your, your soul just goes, I'm out of here. And you have to get it back into balance and say, I'm grounded. I'm connected to source and I'm balanced in my heart because 
Your body is the epicenter of your existence. Meaning that if you are centered in the heart, you are centered at the energy part of your body. You're centered at these 12 mind powers. You're saying, I am in free flow of all these and divine intelligence is perfectly working through me. So it's just a really powerful statement to start saying and, and start to say, hey, I choose to work differently. I choose to handle this in balance. I choose that if I'm going to be angry, I'm going to work through it and find the truth in, uh, truth in this. So we activate our flesh bodies through the gradual refinement, uh, not necessarily by miracle of the divine intervention, but flesh into spirit. This is from Charles Fillmore. Basically what he's saying is that we alchemize our body through what? Living. It's, it's really simple. It's not really a hard process. You just go out and live. And yeah, there's things that you're going to learn from you. It's like, oh, I'm probably not going to do that again. Not really working for me. Has everybody ever done that before? Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. It happens. And so, um, and then you start doing things that are better serving to you and your soul. So it's just something that's for us to start taking into consideration when we start looking at what these masters or these teachers have been teaching us for a very long time. But who's your greatest teacher? Do you guys know? You. You are your greatest teacher. Because within you, you have everything you need to be happy and successful. And technically, believe it or not, you're already enlightened. We have to bring and marry the two together. And when that happens, what's happening in sin really is just you turning your back on your inner world. Does that make sense? Because you don't find God outside. Where do you find God? Inside. One of the profound things I ever heard is this. Seek first the kingdom of heaven. Everybody's heard that verse, right? Mm -hmm. So all these churches are out there saying pray to God and visualizing God outside of themselves, right? Mm -hmm. But then it says the kingdom of heaven is found where? Yeah. I'm like, why don't they put these two things together? Because it's not the words that teach. Remember, seven seals have to be broken because they're not there yet to understand. We were there before. Everybody remember that? And at times, we're still there, right? And so that's where we have to remind ourselves, wait a second, everything I need is within me. So it doesn't mean that you don't have to go out and work. It doesn't mean that you don't have to do things or have put things into action here in the physical world. What it means is that as things are not going the way you need them, or when you start asking for things, you immediately go into what first? Inner world, pray about it, ask for it. Can't tell you how many times, I know you guys have uh, experienced this in your life before, where I've just stopped, and I just said, you know what, show me the way. Show me the way. And then I, <laughs> I don't do this so much anymore, but when I was younger, I, I, I'm very sarcastic. So I, I, I would say to Spirit, I'm like, remember, I'm not that smart, so you're gonna have to knock me upside the head with it. <laughs> so then I realized the knocking upside the head wasn't fun. And then I was like, <laughs> so you have to kind of continue going on. But these are the things people would say, but don't say that, that's like asking God for patience. And I'm like, I was the jerk that actually asked for it because I wanted to see what happened. And so what ended up happening, I learned that patience, you need a lot of it. I was like, finally, I get it. I don't want any more patience. And then I asked God to teach me how to not judge people. Oh, that's a fun one to learn. <laughs> and, so, and so what did he do? It made me feel like everybody was judging me. And what happens? That Even though we say he or she, we, we know as metaphysicians, he or she is within us. Okay, and that's not, that, those are the things that we have to continue to look at. So then Jesus goes on to say in John uh, chapter 8, verse 12, he says, I am the light of the world. Again, Jesus said to them, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Meaning you have this within you. It's really, it's really quite powerful. So people run from this word faith. They, they run from this word prayer. They run from this word spirit. And I was just, I was one of those people. But what ends up happening is it's really amazing, actually. What ends up happening is that you start to go, wait a second, these are just words. They're just words. However, words bring a lot of power. So for a long time, uh, I didn't even talk about this kind of stuff. I was like, I'm not going to talk about Jesus because, you know, make people run or prayer and all that kind of stuff. And then I thought to myself, why? Why are we running away from things that have been around for thousands of years? It's because other people that have taught this stuff didn't see it from what? They weren't in their what? Heart. 
So why not us go out there and teach what the ancients were teaching for a long time, those that are inspired to do it, and really teach it? Because I, I truly believe, and I know, we can alchemize our body and heal ourselves. My, one of my favorite expressions from Ivana Van Zandt is pain, pay attention inward now. So if you have pain going on in your world, what do you need to be doing? Pay attention inward now. So I like it better than fear, false evidence appearing real, because fear, false evidence appearing real, still is another point where you're in pain probably. You've probably got some kind of anxiety or fear or worry or something like that. That means you need to sit down, shut up, and listen. My teacher says, sit down, get quiet, get still and listen. I'm like, why don't we just say, shut up, sit your butt down on the couch and listen. <laughs> so let's be real. Sometimes we have to talk in real language, right? It doesn't, and we have to be like that with ourselves. Like I'll say to myself, I'll, I'll do something. I'm like, yeah, you really didn't get that one, did you? <laughs> so, you know, it's just kind of joking around with yourself. Have fun with yourself. And then you're not going to go into the, oh, I should have done this. And then you're shooting on yourself. Everybody with me on that? Mm. <laughs> so.